on the second day of October, Halloween gave to me two monster houses and a fog that makes it hard to see. Hey everybody, welcome back to our journey through the 31 days of Halloween. Uh, This is day two and uh, October 2nd. And uh, first of all, thanks for uh, for being with me. Uh, I hope you are enjoying your October so far. If not, uh, I hope this selection of movies will make it a little bit better. And if that doesn't work, I don't know what to tell you. You know, maybe therapy, maybe uh, some sort of... What are they? Uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitors? Uh, SS, SRIs? Uh, anyway, this is a medical podcast, folks. And I apologize for taking that detour. <laughs> no, this is a celebration of all things Halloween. And uh, this is my official list of movies I'm watching delivered to you on the daily to give you an idea if you're uh, if you're grasping for a movie to celebrate this holiday season. Well, hey, here here's a movie for you. I still have not begun official decoration yet. Uh, as I record, this is a little bit before the 1st of October. Make sure these get out on time. You can't wait till the last minute and whatnot. But uh, it, it is right around the corner. The, the fog machine is uh, is on the list of things to get, so I will be purchasing a more heavy-duty fog machine to go with my cemetery sort of lawn arrangement. And from there, I'm going to try to get some, uh, some, you know, kind of LED tea lights to kind of light the fog a little bit. Much like uh, our first film uh, for the 31 Days of Halloween, like the fog. At any rate, uh, I don't know if there's going to be any trick-or-treaters, but by God... This house will <laughs> hold the Halloween holy. Okay, so day number two, movie number two, a little bit of a palate cleanser. Started strong with the fog, taking a step back a little bit, doing something that's a little more fun, a little more family friendly. In fact, this is as family friendly as this list is ever going to be again. But it is, uh, it's the film Monster House, which is I originally saw because I had a 3D TV. And that movie was all kinds of 3D. You know, it's CGI, animated film. Uh, Let me give you some some bona fides. Out in 2006, directed by Gil Keenan, who would go on to do that terrible Poltergeist remake. Uh, See Pick 6 movies for more on that. Interestingly written by Dan Harmon, or co-written by Dan Harmon, the guy who did Community and so forth. And there's a little bit of that sense of humor. I think that's one of the things I really like about it. I also like the fact that it's a slightly different take on the haunted house trope, which is that it's not a house being haunted. The house itself is the monster, you know, and and directly represented as such. Like by by the end of this movie, the house is straight up chasing people down the street and into uh, construction zones. It's a little bit silly. Uh, I like the relationship uh, between the main character, uh, DJ, as played by Mitchell Musso, is the the, the young actor's name. Probably not so young now. And I also like uh, his partner, Chowder. I like their relationship a lot. And Chowder is kind of the chubby, dumb kid in the neighborhood. And it's a trope, yes, but he is a funny version of that, particularly when a young girl shows up uh, to kind of... You know, be the the third wheel, fifth wheel, maybe, and and create a little bit of a love triangle. And Chowder's attempts to seduce this girl always make me laugh in this movie. I think it's very funny. It's not scary in any way that uh, that I can uh, I can point to. If it might be a little intense for the very youngest, but uh, here's what I like about it. In addition to that relationship between the main kid and Chowder and, and so forth. Uh, Steve Buscemi is is the potential villain of the film. Uh, and he does some great voice work I- in this. And I like that it's kind of this kind of goofy, friendly, animated film that also can get a little bit intense. Not a lot. I mean, this isn't a gremlin scenario where you're going to blindly stumble into a movie telling your kids that Santa Claus isn't real or some shit like that. 
It's not to that degree, but you know, there's some scary stuff about it, like uh, the house eating a dog and using lures to uh, to get people in its maw and its mouth is like plain, uh, teeth made of planks that swirl around like a buzzsaw. And, you know, it's it, I would say it's no more intense than like Toy Story 3 when all the toys are about to go to hell in a molten lava whirlpool. That movie traumatized me and I, you know, I'm a grown man. See a Toy Story three, that shit hurt. Uh, that was frightening, and and so there's a little bit of that stuff, but that's it. You know, like this is real family safe. But it, you know, the reason I watched it as an adult is that I do think that there's a real spirit of fun. It is funny. Uh, there, there are some good gags in it. I kind of have some minor complaints with the the character animation style. Like it's not bad. It's just the style in which the characters are drawn is maybe not my favorite. I think it's because the hair seems kind of fixed on their heads or something. But uh, that aside, I think some of the animation is also quite good. And for being a nearly 15-year-old film at this point that that hinges on the quality of the, of the uh, computer animation, which is a technology that continues to evolve and they get better all the time and yada, yada, yada. So, you know, this at times can look a little primitive, in that regard, but it works well enough in service of the story. So yeah, Monster House is uh, is day number two. If you want to, again, have a, a good one for the kids, for the whole family to enjoy, something that would hopefully get everyone in the, in the holiday spirit, I highly recommend it. But like I said, this is as family friendly as it's going to get. The rest of this season, who peoples, we are, we are going to get scary. Leading up, leading up, of course, to what am I going to watch on Halloween night? folks. You know, what is that movie going to be? I'm excited to reveal it. I'm excited to watch it, quite frankly. But we've got uh, 28 more movies between uh, ourselves and that final night. So day number three coming up tomorrow. I can't wait to talk about the next movie. I can't wait to watch the next movie, which I haven't done yet. It's going to be a great Halloween season. I'm very excited to watch all of these movies and talk to you about them. So, hey, have a great October 2nd. Uh, remember, we are in the middle of the greatest season uh, that there is. You can have your Christmases, you can have your Hanukkahs, you can have uh, your your whatevers. Whatever whatever uh, season you hold dear, that's fine for you. For me, it's Halloween season. This is the second day of it, and uh, I intend to have a great one, and I hope you do the same. So, uh, talk to everybody tomorrow with a new movie, of course, uh, be sure to drop me a line. Let me know what you are watching this holiday season and also what uh, traditions you have for, for Halloween, uh, what you're enjoying, what you're looking forward to, all that fun stuff. Uh, you can drop me a line at Bo, that is B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. Uh, make the subject line Halloween so I know it is you talking about this. And yeah, let me know uh, Let me know how your October is going. Let me know how, uh, how you're holding... Halloween dear to you in this most wonderful time of the year. So, all right, everybody, uh, talk to you tomorrow. Uh, be safe out there and, and especially be spooky out there. <laughs>